service. Yeah. Well, hello. <laughs> hello and welcome. It's good to be together. I'm glad you're here to worship today. Um, and a special welcome to those worshiping at home and anyone who's new. Um, today, in our sermon, we're going to learn about our extraordinary Savior, who is the bread of life, who gives us true life, the best life, and be encouraged to follow in his way. Do we have any announcements this morning? Yes. Um, I just wanted to let everybody know, um, in the month of April, for the Easter envelope, we collected $280. And in May, I think it was May, Strength in the Church, we collected $153. And then I also wanted to thank everybody um, on the prayer chain that prayer, prayed for Charlie Kimmel back in May. That is my future brother-in-law. He was in the hospital for 20 days with COVID. And he came home on May the 19th with oxygen. And he probably won't be going back to work for about four months until his lungs clear up. So continue the prayers. He is getting much better. He's using the oxygen less and less. So thank you for all your prayers for him. Thank you. Also, my sister-in-law, Dahlia Duffy, had surgery, she had a cancer, tumorous cancer removed, so I'm um, glad, glad she's, and uh, my brother called yesterday and thanked St. Peter's for the prayers, so make sure you thank everybody. <laughs> yes? I just want to let everyone know that Eric Han got us a new American flag, and Donna and I put it up Friday, and uh, next week, July 4th, we will do the Pledge of Allegiance to the Christian flag and the American flag. So again, we'd like to thank Eric uh, for his contribution as well as Donna hiring him. <laughs> <laughs> thank you, Eric and Donna. Thank you. Please join in the call to worship in the bulletin. How clearly the sky reveals God's glory. How plainly it shows what he has done. Each day announces it to the following day. Each night repeats it to the next. Their message goes out to all the world and is heard to the ends of the earth.
mentioned all him is number three in the supplement. <laughs> the good news the Lord says I will put my law on their mind and write it on their hearts I will be their God and they will be my people through Jesus Christ our sins are forgiven amen please be seated the first reading is from 1 Kings 19 3 through 8 
Elijah was afraid and ran for his life. When he came to Beersheba in Judah, he left his servant there, while he himself went a day's journey into the wilderness. He came to a broom bush, sat down under it, and prayed that he might die. I have had enough for it, he said. Take my life. I am no better than my ancestors. Then he lay down under the bush and fell asleep. All at once an angel touched him and said, Get up and eat. He looked around, and there by his head was some bread baked over hot coals and a jar of water. He ate and drank, and then lay down again. The angel of the Lord came back a second time and touched him and said, Get up and eat, for the journey is too much for you. So he got up and ate and drank. Strengthened by that food, he traveled 40 days and 40 nights until he reached Horeb, the Mount of God. And the Gospel reading is in your bulletin. It's from John 6, verses 5 through 13, 22 to 35, and 47 to 51. When Jesus looked up and saw a great crowd coming toward him, he said to Philip, Where shall we buy bread for these people to eat? He asked this only to test him, for he already had in mind what he was going to do. Philip answered him, It would take more than a year's wages to buy enough bread for each one to have a bite. Another of his disciples, Andrew, Simon Peter's brother, spoke up. Here is a boy with five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will they go among so many? Jesus said, have the people sit down. There was plenty of grass in the place, and they sat down. About 5,000 men were there. Jesus then took the loaves, gave thanks, and distributed to those who were seated as much as they wanted. He did the same with the fish. When they had all had enough to eat, he said to his disciples, Gather the pieces that are left over. Let nothing be wasted. So they gathered them and filled twelve baskets with the pieces of the five barley loaves left over by those who had eaten. The next day the crowd that had stayed on the opposite shore of the lake realized that only one boat had been there and that Jesus had not entered it with his disciples but that they had gone away alone. Then some boats from Tiberias landed near the place where the people had eaten the bread after the Lord had given thanks. Once the crowd realized that neither Jesus nor his disciples were there, they got into the boats and went to Capernaum in search of Jesus. When they found him on the other side of the lake, they asked him, Rabbi, when did you get here? Jesus answered, Very truly I tell you, you are looking for me, not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and had your fill. Do not work for food that spoils, but for food that endures to eternal life, which the Son of Man will give you. For on him God the Father has placed his seal of approval. Then they asked him, What must we do to do the work God requires? Jesus answered, The work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So they asked him, What sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, as it is written. He gave them bread from heaven to eat. Jesus said to them, Very truly I tell you, it is not Moses who has given you the bread from heaven, but it is my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. For the bread of God is the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. Sir, they said, always give us this bread. Then Jesus declared, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never go hungry, and whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Very truly, I tell you, the one who believes has eternal life. I am the bread of life. Your ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness, yet they died. But here is the bread that comes down from heaven, which anyone may eat and not die. I am the living bread that came down from heaven. Whoever eats this bread will live forever, 
This bread is my flesh, which I will give for the life of the world. This is the good news. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. Christ. And our hymn is Jesus I Live to Thee, which is page 254 in the hymnal. see you as a way to get what they want. And Jesus knew 
what that was like. Now, one day people were following him around, not because they loved him, but because they, they wanted something from him. And John 6 says a crowd had seen Jesus work miracles. He was healing the sick. And so they started following him around. And they wanted Jesus to do a miracle. And it's mealtime, so Jesus says to Philip, you know, to test him, to one of the disciples, he says, where shall we buy bread for all these people to eat? And Philip, you know, he's just wondering, where did Jesus get the idea, you know, that we have enough money to buy food for 5,000 people? You know, if you've ever fed a crowd, if you ever threw a big party or a reception, you know that the food is not cheap. And uh, plus, back then, there weren't many places to get food quickly. You know, there weren't McDonald's or Quickie Marts. You know, there was no way to get food out here to all these people. So Philip says to Jesus, it would take more than half a year's wages to buy <coughs> enough bread for each one of these people to have a bite. You know, so not to feed them a meal, but to give everybody a bite would take a year and a half's wages. There's another disciple, uh, Andrew, who's trying to find a way to feed these people, and he says, well, here's a boy who brought five small barley loaves and two small fish, but how far will that go among so many people? So Jesus says, well, have him sit down, and he said, and there's 5,000 men plus women and children in it's maybe even a little embarrassing to think of the disciples there while Jesus take the loaves, which were small loaves, they were more like breadsticks, you know, they were, they were pretty little. It's just a boy's lunch. So Jesus takes these little uh, breadstick-like loaves and he gives thanks to God for them and he distributes them. And it seems kind of like if I took a donut. And I said, today we're all going to have donuts. <laughs> and I tear it into pieces. And, you know, thank God for our donut. And then I give the ushers little pieces of donut to give out to everybody. You know, and that would be kind of silly and not fulfilling. But Jesus has faith. So uh, he knows what he can do. He has the disciples distribute bread and fish and somehow over 5,000 people sitting on the grass get a full meal. There's enough for them to have as much as they want, and there are even leftovers. So it's an amazing miracle. But honestly, people didn't have faith in Jesus. Not even the disciples understood who he was yet. And the people who were following Jesus, they wanted to see miracles, and they wanted, they wanted lunch. But why settle for lunch when Jesus came to offer true life? And then later, everyone goes home. But the next day, this crowd uh, goes searching for Jesus. They see Jesus' disciples go off in a boat without Jesus, and, and so they're like, where's Jesus? And some of the crowd get into boats, and they find Jesus on the other side of the lake. And Jesus says to the people, very truly I tell you, you are looking for me not because you saw the signs I performed, but because you ate the loaves and you had your fill. So Jesus knows they aren't as interested in him as they are in another free lunch. These people just want something from Jesus, and they don't care who he is. In fact, they ask him for another sign. In verse 30, they ask him, what sign then will you give that we may see it and believe you? What will you do? Our ancestors ate the manna in the wilderness. Moses gave them bread from heaven to eat. So the people are trying to get Jesus to feed them another time, to perform another sign. And they egg Jesus on, they say, well, you know, Moses was better than you. He had bread come down from heaven. And Jesus replies, well, it's my Father who gives you the true bread from heaven. 
So he's saying, here I am, I'm the true bread from heaven that God has given you. It's like he's saying, you know, here I am, I'm sent from God, I've come to give you life, I am the bread that you should want. And even the disciples, you know, they have a hard time understanding what Jesus means when he said, I'm the bread of life. I'm the living bread, it comes from heaven. And the story takes place before the disciples know that Jesus is the Son of God. You know, one day they'll know, they'll realize, after the resurrection, they'll see. You know, Jesus didn't just come to perform miracles, you know, to impress people. He came to have a saving relationship with everyone. And we're invited to follow, and, and Jesus encourages us to make our lives about so much more than freebies. So why settle for lunch when Jesus came to offer true life? Now some of us might get tired of faith and tired of following Jesus and we might ask, well, you know, if I follow Jesus, what's in it for me? You know, I would believe if only God would make my life easier. So what, what do I get out of following God? And we can get distracted by wanting our needs met immediately, rather than being amazed by Jesus, knowing he is God who offers us an incredible life. So Jesus says, I am the bread of life, the bread that comes down from heaven and gives life to the world. So Jesus gives us salvation and eternal life, and God, through Jesus, gives us even more. He also gives us a life right now. You know, I find, and maybe you do too, that when I become a, a me monster, you know, when I just think about what I need and what I want and what I don't have, I don't feel great. I don't feel good when I just think about me. So instead you and I are invited to be the way Jesus' disciples were after his resurrection. You know, they finally got it. They understood Jesus came down from heaven and they finally saw that Jesus didn't come to help them with their agenda. He didn't come to give them glory or fame or uh, a revolution against Rome. Jesus came so they could have true life, so that we could love the people around us, our friends and family, and love the people who we aren't as close to, but who need our help. True life is putting others first. It's taking whatever role we have and doing it with all we've got. You know, if you're a mother, to be a great mother you're a father, to be a great father. If you're a neighbor, to be great to your neighbors. Or if you're a brother or sister, to be great to your siblings. Or a child, to be great to your parents. It's finding true peace and abundant life. When you surrender to Jesus, you think differently. You think, not my will, <clears throat> but yours, God, be done. You love others and your life then leaves a big mark on the world. So my homework for you is this, it's to ask Jesus, how can I give or serve today? Remember, Jesus fed 5,000 plus people. He was thinking about others. So at least one day this week, ask God, how can I give or serve today? How can I help someone today? So life's not about getting a free lunch. It's not about getting, it's about living the life that truly is life and following Jesus. God, uh, when we trust in him, God gives us salvation and eternal life. But following Jesus also does more. It frees us from being somebody who always wants something from others. It frees us from being a me monster. It means that uh, we want to make the world a better place by the power of Jesus, the bread of life. So uh, when we follow Jesus, when we
turn to God and, and live the life that he calls us to. We find that God and Jesus are all that we really need. Amen. The Lord, oh, please stand. <clears throat> the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we're grateful for the blessings of this day. We're grateful for all you give. We are so blessed, and we ask you to help us to think of others, to realize that you feed us the bread of life. We're part of your kingdom and that you send us out to be your hands and feet in the world. We pray for uh, the victims of the condo collapse in the Miami area. Uh, we pray for the families. Uh, we pray for the rescue workers. And we also ask that uh, you would help us to not have any, again, to do what we need to do to make a uh, home safe. We pray for healing for all who are sick, especially we pray for Elaine Hernandez, Charlie Kimball, uh, Dahlia Duffy, and Harry Evans. And we're grateful for healing you have given. We pray for Wonder World Fun Fest. We pray that you prepare the children and youth to be receptive to you, that you're with the teachers and helpers helping them. Uh, may there be a lot of fun and may faith and trust in you grow. We pray for our country as we experience a heat wave and we ask that you keep us all cool and health and safe, healthy and safe. And uh, we pray for our community, for our businesses and churches, organizations and residents that all recover and are restored to before the pandemic. And now we lift up to you in silence our prayer request as well as our thanks for blessings you have given. And all this, O oh Lord, we pray in confidence that you hear and answer when we pray. Jesus name amen let us pray the prayer our Savior taught us our Father who art in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please be seated. God provides for us abundantly, so in gratitude we now bring forward our offering.
Christ, blessing and glory, wisdom and thanksgiving, honor and power, and strength be unto you, God, forever and ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Jesus said to work for the food that endures to eternal life. So this week uh, we can do that. We can bring something for the kitten zoo or a donation. We can pray for BBS. It's uh, Monday through Thursday. Or, or help with BBS. Or come for Bible study Wednesday morning to feed on the word of God. Jesus said the work of God is this, to believe in the one he has sent. So go forth trusting in Jesus and following in his path. Amen. Let it shine. 